how do you go about the process of evaluating a season when it all changed at the deadline? It was a revolving door with injuries. Like, can you, do you have to evaluate the season on a more granular and just sort of like what this guy did, what that guy did instead of, you know, more of a broad approach just because of the unusual nature of everything that went on this year? Yeah, that is a great question because, you know, I'm not sure there's kind of um, a formula for, for, for um, interpreting a season like this because I don't think it's ever happened before. And um, obviously you have the um, COVID um, protocols and everything that the whole league was struggling with. And then you have our particular set of circumstances where we were um, you know, littered with injuries and, and, and um, made a, you know, series of significant trades at the deadline. So I'm not sure there's a playbook to, to refer to on this. I think that, you know, what we've tried to do is probably just start, start now to just assess where each guy is on his curve, what he's going to need to get, to get where we want him to be. And, um, you know, that started even with, uh, you know, exit interviews yesterday and, and, and just um, hearing from the players' perspective how, how they interpreted things. But uh, um, uh, it's a great question, and it's probably a, a messier answer than, I, than I'd like to give you. But I think that every guy is on his own path right now, and we need to, we need to um, bring everybody together to start to define roles, to understand who, who everyone's going to be, but also to let guys know that last year is over. Right now, it's about next season and our future. And I can tell you that the sentiment amongst all of our players is, is extremely optimistic and um, eager to kind of get into the summer. And as a follow, I saw the interview you did with, with, with the TV um, during the last game or sometime during, during the last weekend. And you were asked about Markel and J.I. And I know you're hesitant to put timelines on things with mm-hmm. with J.I. especially. I mean, is there is there hope? I mean, I know Markel, it's going to be I mean, ACLs are what they are. But is there a chance that J.I. could be ready for the start of next year or are you not even broadly in, within that window yet? Yeah, I, I really don't. I really you know, don't, don't drill down on that stuff because, um, you know, J.I. missed a season and then he played for a short burst and, um, and then he's missed another season. So, you know, as I said on, 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 on that uh, discussion, you know, really what it's about right now and, and what, what I always ask our guys, like, are there any setbacks? You know, as long as there are no setbacks, then, you know, listen, J.I. came back, honestly, um, um, in a way, because he doubled down on his workload the last time, that like surprised us. He kind of came out of nowhere. He 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 set his goal and he and and, and he cleared every hurdle. And now um, I don't know what that's going to look like, you know, on the back end. But I just know that he's working every day. There have been no setbacks. You know, he has constant check-ins with um, with the performing surgeon and 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 with our medical staff and performance staff. And you know, it's all been good. So um, I. Uh, I know uh, it's frustrating sometimes to not be able to apply timelines, but, you know, I think it's really important that the players know that we are not going to rush them back, that, that it's going to be done the right way, that they're going to have the utmost confidence that when they step back on the court, it's to, um, it's to perform well. So um, I, hope, I hope that's a good enough answer, Tim. It is. Thanks, Jeff. Good luck this summer. Thank you. Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Jeff, good to see you. Um, now that you have a better idea of what you have uh, post trade, uh, along with the the rehab process of Markel Ji, uh, you know the the odds that you have in, in the lottery. Just just how exciting of a time is it for this team? You know, kind of having a better understanding of where you guys are at right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, Dan, look, those trades are hard to make, man. I know that, like, you know, fans get attached to players, and, and we've had a modicum of success. I wouldn't say we've been successful, but, you know, we, we were a playoff team, and you make these trades, and you completely change, you know, the identity of your roster and your timeline and your, your issues and, and all these things kind of, like, evolve. Personally, I mean, I, I can say that in, the time, in my time here, I've never been more excited about the prospects for our team um, you know, obviously I think we've raised the ceiling considerably. Um, we've given ourselves a chance who, you know, I don't like to ever really discuss lottery odds and that sort of stuff, because those are, I always say, 
you know, those aren't calculated risks. Those are just risks. And, and we'll just see where the, where, where that shakes out. But I know this, like we have a chance to add one or maybe even two quality players this year um, through the draft and, you know, believe wholeheartedly in all of our young players. And, and um, you know, so, so I'm really bullish on our future. I, I really believe that it's a great time to be a Magic fan. I, I always believe that there's never a more fun time to be a fan than to get on the bandwagon when it's just starting to take off, you know, and uh, I, I, I don't apply timelines. I don't know, um, you know, what, what one person's development is going to look like juxtaposed next to another, but I just believe that we have a lot of talent on this team and a lot of character and a lot of guys that want to win. And we have a lot of ways to add more of those guys. And, you know, some of it will be uh, a little more kind of, um, uh, we'll have to just kind of figure it out as we get there, as opposed to like the last few years, we've had a very um, established, defined, uh, continuity-laden roster. And it's been, okay, well, now we need to add this element. Now we need to add this. This fits better here. We're not there now. You know, We're about developing these young players, um, establishing their place in the league, establishing the work ethic, establishing winning above individual development, and all of those things are going to occupy our attention. But if you've got the right guys and if you've got talent, you just have to feel good about that. And, and we do have both of those and we have significant ways to add more of those guys. So, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about where we are uh, set up um, and uh, it's about work now. You know, we've got to do work. We've got to get ready for the draft. And that's the next uh, you know, phase. And, and then we look towards next season. Okay, Philip Rossman Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Hey, Jeff, uh, good to see you. Um, obviously, there were a lot of challenges this season, you know, from COVID protocols to, to the, to the un unseen challenges of the injuries. Was just how this whole season came together with the, with the schedule being as compact as it was, was, was that maybe a bigger challenge than maybe, maybe you'd expected? Or, 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 or how, kind of, how much did that kind of add on to some of the other challenges that, that you guys faced this year? Well, I, you know, I'm speaking for probably every, everybody in the league now, um, you know, when I say that, you know, there, we have never been through a season like this. Uh, I can't even tell you guys, even when we were shut down, the amount of work and the amount of learning and the amount of um, uh, communicating uh, that, it, that it took just to kind of, uh, just to keep the wheels on the bus, you know, and, and so, um, it's been a very, very challenging, intense, frustrating year. And, um, you know, hopefully we're kind of working our way out of it slowly, carefully. I know the league will do it the right way. Um, and probably, you know, look, I, I, I can probably look at you guys and ask you the same question, you know, because I, I know what it was like for me. It had to be the same for you. I mean, you know, you weren't allowed in our facility. You weren't allowed to be around our guys. And I can't imagine what it's like to cover a team and not – actually be around the team. So, you know, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate the fact that you guys went through it as we did, you know, and um, it, it wasn't easy. And it's obviously something that none of us want to have to deal with anymore. But, you know, we, we certainly are still uh, still dealing with a lot of its issues and components. And, um, you know, we have to make sure that we navigate, hopefully, hopefully this is the back end of it, but that we navigate this properly. And, uh, you know, the league's given us great guidance um, it's been it's been heavy and it's been a lot uh, to interpret and and um, and execute, but it's been necessary. And and you know here we are. We've we've just gotten through an NBA season, you know, and now they're into the playoffs and they're allowing more fans back in. So you know it's been a very very intense year. Um, I've never seen anything like it. I appreciate everyone that's had to go through it, and uh, including you guys. Josh Robbins, the Athletic. Forgot to unmute myself again. Uh, you always do that. I'm an incompetent. What else can I say? Uh, Jeff, uh, I'm curious, what did you see from RJ, RJ uh, since he arrived with the team and then had his minutes ramp up after that? Significant improvement. Um, you know... You, 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 you track these guys, you know, you from, from, from pre-draft and, and, you know, you follow them. And, you know, when we started to 
embark upon the whole concept of, okay, are we going to start to look at some of these trades? That was a guy we targeted, you know, we liked him. And, and uh, you know, um, he had played, I think around 200 minutes. So you're talking about a guy who never played in college and then played 200 minutes in the NBA. Oh, and by the way, you know, I'm remiss because I, I didn't fully understand when we traded for him, he had just been coming out of um, like a COVID restriction where he had been basically uh, like sent, sent to a hotel room in Chicago for a couple of weeks. So he was completely deconditioned. And, um, you know, look, what did I see? What did you guys see? I mean, he got better. I think he's going to continue to get better. He's, he's a worker. He's, um, he's, he's very talented. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, I hate the concept. The, 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 I hate the, the phrase, like the game started to slow down. I just think it's like, you know, guys need, they need reps. They need to understand how they fit in. They need, you know, coaches and, and, and people around them to, to message them. Like, here's how your role will help us win. And the most important thing is that those guys are receptive to hearing that if they have the talent, they have the work ethic, they're receptive to hearing that. I mean, generally good things are going to happen from there. And, you know, what he was named rookie of the month last uh, yesterday and, you know, happy for him for that. Uh, obviously we've got, you know, much bigger goals than that, but, um, you know, I think RJ's, uh, feeling good about himself. He's going to be around here the whole summer. He's eager to get back to work and hopefully our fans liked what they saw from him. Okay. Jamie say WKMG. Hi Jeff. Um, just wondering how, how would you evaluate how the coaching staff handled um, the season post transition? And also wondering if, if that is going to be your sideline leadership going forward and how much confidence you have in coach Clifford and his staff in you know, developing these young guys. Uh, yeah, Jamie, thanks. I, I can't thank those guys enough. And I can't tell you what a good job I think they did. Um, I have to say, when we were discussing these internally, when they were discussing these trades, you know, and, and, you know, we had discussions everywhere across the board with every sort of agenda lined up and as we always must. And um, I, one of the things that we discussed was it's not the right time to do this. You know, these sorts of kind of like organizational shifts should not be done mid season. It's not fair to the coaches. It's not fair to, you know, some of the players that are, that are, that remain. And it's not um, conducive to a real smooth transition to, you know, another phase of, of, of your operations. And so, you know, look, what do you do as your, as a coach, when all of a sudden, like, you know, your, your roster changes, your agendas change, your goals change, what can I say? They've done, a, they've done an amazing job. I think like you see it in the development back to the last question, like RJ Hampton getting better, you know, um, Cole got better, Chuma got better. I mean, like, I think that, you know, this is part and parcel of having, having a, an organization that communicates and having a coaching staff that, you know, is working for the organization. And so, um, uh, I don't know what to tell you. It's, 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 a, it's a really difficult thing to do mid-season to just say, we're just making this 180 and we're reprioritizing the way that we work and what, what matters. And, um, and, and with that, you know, um, there's no planning that goes into it. By the way, when, as I'm saying that, we've got a game tonight and another one tomorrow, you know, and, uh, you know, our coaches, you know, Coach Cliff spends a lot of time on, you know, very specifically uh, delegating minutes and roles and who's on the court with whom and playing groups and, you know, all this. And all of a sudden to have that completely upended, uh, it's not something that, um, that, that, you know, uh, probably was fair to put on his plate, in all honesty. But um, I, I thought he did an amazing job handling it, as I, as I knew he would. And, um, you know, we move on. And, and here's where we are now. You know, now we're in a new phase of, of, of operations. And now we do have you know, the proper alignment, you know, in front of us to, to take the summer to really um, do this right. And that's going to, you know, I mean, internally, we're having discussions about like, how do we need to change the way that we work a little bit, you know, and so, so, uh, you know, those things will all kind of like evolve over the summer. But, you know, I, I just come back to the right players, the right character, um, more, more abilities to add more and, and kind of like going forward from there. Uh, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sun. Yeah, Jeff, sort of following up on Jamie's question, I, I think Cliff has like, I think he's got a year left on his contract. Are there any plans to extend his contract? And also a second part of the question, um, 
you said the other night on the telecast, this is the most excited you've been about the magic uh, since you've been here. Can you sort of elaborate on that and why? Yeah. Well, Mike, I'm sorry. The first, the first part's going to be an easy answer. I won't discuss that publicly. Uh, I, I will not discuss contract matters with players or coaches or anything publicly. Team policy, I, I hope you understand, you know, why that, that has to be the case. I can tell you that, you know, Cliff and I had a nice talk, you know, uh, yesterday. But, but honestly, all of our guys, all of them, performance, players, coaches, the message is this, get out, go away. You know, we're actually having our court varnished for the next week and a half. So the fumes and whatnot, we, we won't we'll not even be in the office. It's time. This has been such a, 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 a intense time that, um, you know, our messaging to everybody is just go away, get away from the magic, get away from the NBA, be with family, do your thing. And we'll all kind of, uh, you know, hook back up in a week or two and, and we'll start to, you know, decompress and compare notes and all that. So, but obviously when you talk about contracts and stuff, I won't, I won't, you know, ever get into stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then Mike to the second one, man. Yeah. Look, uh, I don't know. I feel, I feel like I, I don't ever want to, you know, feel like I'm trying to sell you guys something, you know, but I believe this is the most exciting time to be an Orlando magic fan. And I'm the most excited since I've been here. And for all the reasons that I've probably said, you know, already a couple of times, I, I think we have a lot of talented young players who are, you know, I mean, you think about some of, I think about some of our older guys, you know, Markel, Jonathan, you know, Wendell, you know, Mo, those guys are like 23 or 22, you know, and then like RJ 20, Cole just turned 21 and, um, you know, Chuma's 22. And it's like, the, these guys are, are, are just starting, you know, but like they're starting with talent, you know, they're starting with like a great affinity for one another and, and they, they understand like role orientation. They, they want to learn how to win. And I think even like in the short time post trade, we saw that like, and, and that's one of the things that I'm really mo most excited about Mike is like a lot of times with young teams and look, we're going to go through growing pains. Don't get me wrong. We are going to go through growing pains, but what you really want to see from young guys is that they really want to learn how to win. You know, they don't want to, they don't want to, you know, uh, uh, talk about like how many points they scored. They want to, they want to understand like why, what they did that night, fell short of winning if that was the case, you know? And so um, I think these guys are hungry for that. that. That's what I always refer back to the character and, and the work ethic. And, you know, when you couple that with like the talent and you say like, well, look, we, we have one, maybe two picks this year. If we don't have two this year, we'll have two next year and the year after, you know? And, um, you know, I don't know what all that's gonna mean, what it's gonna look like. And I know, uh, uh, you know, here we go into a, a rebuild mode again, but I'm very optimistic about this. And I feel like we have, more talent on this roster than we've had since I've been here and the way the means to add even more. And, um, you know, it's up to us now to um, set up our infrastructure in a way that's best suited to developing these young guys to getting them where we need to get them. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Jill Kepner, WF TV. <laughs> Jeff, good morning. Um, so you mentioned earlier, uh, way earlier, that uh, you are evaluating the players and talking with them about um, where they got, if they got to where you wanted them to be this season. I'm curious how many of the players and, and which players you told that they did get to where you wanted them to be this season. And then kind of going on with that next year, this time next year, where do you hope this franchise is? Well, the first part, Joe, is you're never where you want to be. I mean, I was having these discussions with Vooch, you know, you got to get to, here's what you got to do next, you know? So no, none of them are where we want them to be. And, and trust me, if, if they were, if they or, or we were happy with where they are now, then we're all in the wrong jobs, you know? Um, you know, they got a long way to go. I mean, look, RJ Hampton just won Rookie of the Month. That guy has miles to go, miles to go, light years, you know? But he understands that. And he wants that. And so that's why, to me, that's where, you know, that's what you need to get better. Um, um, so so that, that's, that's going to continue to evolve. And that's part of like what I say, we have to set up the infrastructure and the right means of doing things because our goals, priorities, timelines, everything shifts a little bit. Um, as far as next year, you know, it's funny. I, I honestly wasn't sure exactly what to expect because you're getting, whenever you trade for a player, you do your homework, you watch a ton of video, you get your intel, you, know, you do your pre-draft reports. What do we think of these players when we really were digging deep? 
And, um, and then you make the deal and you kind of find out, you know, it's, it's, and then you find out like what you got, you know? And so um, I was, I was very encouraged in the immediate aftermath of the trade. If you guys remember back and I don't, I wouldn't expect you to, but you know, we beat the Pelicans, we beat the Clippers, we, we gave the, the Lakers a game and then we gave, and we got our butts handed to us by Utah and we gave Denver a game. We took them down to the final few possessions. And there was a fit, there was like, there was a, a kind of, um, I think uh, a role orientation that kind of just maybe like peaked out a little bit. And that kind of like gave us a little hope. Um, and then listen, let's be real. Like after that, then you lose like MCW, you know, James Ennis, T. Ross. I mean, you lose all of our vet guys, Otto, you know, you lose all these guys. And, and I, hate, I, I hate to lean on that as a crutch, but you know, I don't know what we would have been. I really believe maybe we could have competed for that playing spot, you know, had we had all of those vet guys stayed healthy. I really don't know. But I know that first road trip was encouraging. And to answer your question, you know, I'm never going to set like a hard goal about this. I expect us to be competitive. You know, I think that a lot of times what happens in these seasons, I hate to say this, is you, you come to these, the end of these seasons and they get really ugly and then they're compounded with all of the injuries that we had and half the players we had on the court had been there you know for for a few weeks and like didn't know each other didn't know what we were doing and you know I, I know that I don't need to say this to you guys but that ain't the Orlando magic you know that's not the team we're bringing back next year you know we're going to be we're going to be talented we're going to be hungry and and we're going to I believe be competitive and 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 and, and I'm telling you that one of the things that matters to me, I, I believe in this league that matters, is that the players believe that it's not just today. It's like, and we're going to keep getting better and better. And you can feel the organizations. You can feel when you're playing young teams that believe that. They keep coming. That's, that's who I hope that we can be next year. Okay. Uh, Jake Chapman, Orlando Magic, Audio Network. Hey, Jeff, you mentioned before that um, in the past couple off seasons, the plan was a lot more um, specific. You knew what you had. You knew what you were going out and trying to target. Does that mean that moving forward, or at least this off season, um, there will be a little less, less of an emphasis on fit, on positional fit? Are you just going to go out and try to get the most talented guys in? I mean, that's a great question because the answer is always, you know, the draft is about talent. And, you know, you, know, I've, uh, you guys always ask, are you going to, you know, pick the best available. And it's yes, you know, and, and sometimes it fits and sometimes it doesn't, you know, we are in a, in a very um, um, uh, interesting position right now. Um, we have some free agents, you know, we, we, we're not going to have, you know, 15 guys, 23 and under on our team next year. We're going to have some veteran players um, as we did when we first made the trade um, that, that can be on the court and help us establish uh, a way for, for, the young guys to slot in and, and understand like how their roles are going to grow. And so we will look to do that. And obviously it's a really difficult question to answer because I'll just say this, we have to bear that in mind for sure, but we don't even know if we're going to have one or two picks right now. That, that's how kind of like early in the process it is, you know, soon in about a month, we'll know where we're picking. Is it one pick or two picks, you know, and then we'll start to understand a little bit. Okay. Now how can the draft fit into our roster building? And then, you know, free agency even a little bit. So um, it's a great question, and it will be an important question. I will say that for sure it will be less so than in past years. You know, in past years, well, we've got this guy slotted in here, this many minutes, blah, blah, blah. And so it, it was like it, it was a puzzle that was mostly done in, in, in previous seasons. Like you had a few, few jigsaw pieces to, to squeeze in, but by and large it was pretty much, you know, a completed puzzle. Whereas now it is, it is more fluid a little bit. So, so, I mean, and so, so, so it does become a relevant part of our summer discussions and we'll, we'll discuss that, you know, in depth as we kind of like head into the draft and, and beyond. Pat Welter, Spectrum Sports. <clears throat> Jeff, as you just mentioned, you don't even know where you're picking or if you will have one or two picks. But, you know, in this early stage, where are you at in the draft evaluation process and how do you view this class? I know, you know, kind of the group think right now is that maybe it's a five player draft, um, but you hear that kind of thing every year and it changes as the players actually play in the league. So how do you view it and where are you at? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a great point. <laughs> 
you know, it, it's very seldom that, that you look back 10 years later and you're, I mean, I think by and large, the league does a pretty good job and, and increasingly so as the years tick on and we apply more layers and sophistication to the draft, I think we do, do a better job. But there are always going to be like those, those gaps and those like those misses, you know. So, um, uh, but, but yeah, look, right now, I can tell you this. Our guys have been working around the clock like this year. And I would say this is the closest that we can feel to what you guys must feel. Because as I said earlier, you guys are trying to cover a team that you can't be around. We're trying to draft players that we have not been able to see this year. And I'm not going to lie. It's hard. It's hard. Um, I felt even last year, we all got sent home, you know, during the conference tournaments, um, things got shut down. There were no agent, vis no agent workouts, no player visits, um, no meaningful Chicago camp. Um, so like all of that was like taken away, but at least we had, you know, this like body of work to lean on. You know, we had this um, um, ability to have seen these guys live, even see, you know, the old expression, like you're, you're, you're a freshman in November and you're a sophomore in March, you know, even be able to see some of that, you know, um, none of that this year. I mean, it's all out the window. You know, we, we made a, a very brief trip, you know, Matt and John and I, um, you know, to, to cover like the first round of the tournament and try to lay, eye, lay, lay eyes on as many um, prospects as we were able to, but um, it's a challenge. So what we've done is, sorry to, to speak too long on this, but what we've done is we've been working all year. We've been working on video. We've been having discussions. We're, we're, we're starting to put, put our guys into tiers um, um, and, and try to understand who they are. And now we're hopeful we're getting some guidance from the league that we'll be able to have in Chicago, have some guys in for visits. And maybe that becomes, um, you know, heightened importance. And we're even discussing, you know, we don't want to overemphasize that. If, if we only value that as, you know, X percent of the process before, we can't, we can't, overly, you know, um, value that just because we weren't able to do this other. So we're having those discussions, but I can tell you that we've been talking about players throughout the whole draft, throughout the whole season and watching video. And we, as a matter of fact, I have, a, I have a, you know, a meeting today for a few hours with our, with our, with our BOPS crew um, to have another draft discussion. So um, it's something that we've been working on. I'm sure every team has, and it's just been done differently this year. And, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to, come into the draft with the same level of confidence that we typically do. And I'm, you know, I, I believe that we will, but it's just going to take a little extra work and hopefully we'll get some guys in for visits. Okay. We have time for a few more. We'll get to most of the group here. Uh, Darren Stolfus, Wesh. Hey Jeff, uh, Steve said something about this being the toughest coach or the toughest year coaching wise of his career. How would you describe just everything that went on in the past season. I know it's all about the future, but looking back. Not even close, <laughs> not even close. Um, you know, I mean, I hate to, I hate to even increase his burden by doing what we did mid season, you know, in addition to everything else we're dealing with and the injuries to, 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 to kind of like, you know, flip the script on him mid season. So I probably didn't help in that regard, but I can tell you from, from our seat, from, 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 from my seat, um, it's been, uh, it's just been relentless, man. It's just been relentless and dealing with, um, COVID protocols and, and, um, you know, I think that's something that hasn't been discussed in a while, but is, is every, you know, bit as important to our league is, is, you know, raising the awareness of our social injustice on um, platforms. And, um, and that's been something that we've worked on and, and obviously, uh, what we've been through and, and I can't tell you guys like even even like the simple socialization on the road of not being able to like get your food and eat in the meal room every time you get you're getting a you're getting a, a brown bag and you're taking it back to your room and it just there's very it's just it's just heavy and the players they have to test twice every day have to get up we can get back at three in the morning they got to get up at eight and get in the next morning and, and then test before practice or the game and managing um everybody's uh um you know, own ability to kind of like handle this differently and to communicate all of the protocols and keep everybody tied together and keep them believing. And, uh, you know, and, and for me to even, I, I'm, I'm sitting here sometimes throughout the season, just why am I even in this Zoom where I'm listening to doctors talk about COVID and, you know, and I'm just, you know, but, but these are the things that we all need to be aware of and learn the numbers and, and, and you know, 
hear the science and because we need to bring it back because our guys want to know, you know, so, so we have a responsibility to, to, to our players, to our staff, to keep them safe and let them know, like, here's why this is being done. And, but um, I, I just can't speak the extra layers of, of work, um, of, of, of information to manage, of communication layers that were brought about. And then to have gone through what we went through, um, you know, with our injuries first and then the trades and then more injuries, um, you know, just trying to um, keep us all attached like this, because this is who we've been and it's who we will continue to be. Um, but yeah, it was a very intense season. And, and, and right now our guys need to just go away and, and be with their families and, you know, uh, exhale. Okay, we're, we're going to do these final four questions and then we got to get Jeff moving. Uh, Brandon Kravitz, 96.9 The Game. Hey, Jeff. It's, um, it's been a few years since this team has had the cap space to really be aggressive in free agency. You've spent a lot of your time here re-signing the guys that were already on the roster. Do you plan to be aggressive in free agency this year? Well, you know... I think it's all tied together. Everything is like interconnected. So like, I, I like to know like how many draft picks we're going to have, what picks we're going to have before I'm able to kind of like get to like the end game of like where we look at it in free agency. I'll say this though, you know, one of the teams that we were discussing um, when we were uh, uh, having, having discussions about Vooch um, is a team that has multiple draft picks. And um, one of the things that, that, that they said was, you know, we're not quite sure that our roster is ready to kind of push our chips to the middle of the table right now. And, um, and so um, I feel that part of this has to evolve a little bit, you know? So look, if there becomes like an, a, an opportunity for us to do something significant in free agency, we will never say no to that. And we will suss out all of those opportunities, you know, but that said, we have to work very sensitively towards, you know, the new timeline that we've established and the path that each of these players are on. And um, so it's, 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 uh, it's not like a yes or no answer because it's not a yes or no answer. You know, it's very much interconnected to all these other things. And as we'll have to just figure that out as we go. Um, but to me, you know, it's just having the room, you know, I don't know what form or fashion that takes, you know, having the flexibility, having the extra picks, you know, um, generally good things will happen, you know, and, and we'll have to take those on a case by case basis. I will say this as well, and then I'll get off. But, you know, we've been in a position the last few years where these questions were so hard for us. They were so hard for us because we're trying to win now, but we're also trying to develop young guys. And for the first time since I've been here, I, I, I feel so much more um, at ease with just a path. You know, we, we have a much more clearly defined path right now. So, Will we be aggressive with free agency? Yes, if it fits into what we're trying to do. And now there's a more, uh, some, of those, some of those questions will be able to answer themselves much more easily than in seasons gone by. Keith Smith, Yahoo. Hey, Jeff, good morning. Um, when you talk about that, to, to build on that a little bit, how important when you made those trades, obviously the goal is to get in young talent and add draft picks, but how important was it to kind of clean up the cap sheet for years moving forward? In, the, in addition, how much does it mean to you that the franchise's leadership from ownership on down has entrusted you to shepherd this team through another rebuild? It's everything. <laughs> that's, an, that's a short answer. It's everything. Um, you can't win in this league without that. And we have the best ownership in the league. And in all honesty, it's, it's part of the reason that I came and, and, you know, I knew that going in and, you know, to, to, to work, um, for Alex Martins and to work for the DeVos family and know that I have the support and I have all the means at our disposal to execute our plans. Um, without that, you got no shot. So, so, uh, it's everything. Rob Parks, 48minutes.com. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Um, we, so you talked about this a little bit as far as the free agency, but I'm just interested in your plans as far as the young players go this offseason from summer league to, you know, training to working out in Orlando. Like, how crucial is this summer um, for the team's success if they want to turn this thing around quickly? That's a great question. It's, it's paramount, and it's something that we've talked about with all of our guys and look, when, when, when you say 
to a player, we want you around this summer. We want you to be here. That doesn't mean we want you to be here 24-7, 365. Like, you can't do that. The, the season is too intense. You know, once you get rolling, it's like we're all, you know, they say, you know, NBA is like a family. Some of that is true. Some of it's not. But the fact of the matter is, like, we want them here most of the time. We want them doing the work together, you know, and with our group. And so those guys are committed to that. Now, from our end of things, here's where, you know, we're taking a little time to, you know, reassess because we've had a different set of circumstances, you know, different guidelines, different goals, maybe. So we have to, we have to think ourselves, like, how do we best serve these guys? How do we best set up their summer? And that's, that's what, that's some of the stuff that we're working towards now. Um, because, um, you know, this isn't the same agenda. It's not the same team that we had, you know, six months ago. So, so we go into the summer and the most important thing is we have the commitment, we have the buy-in, we have the belief, we have the, um, the hunger to understand how to win from all of our young guys. And they, they, they will all be here. They will all be here this summer. And, um, you know, I've been on a lot of teams where that's not the case. So, you know, they're all, they're all buying in, they're all excited. And now we have to give them the best platform, the best daily program for, you know, how to get them into the season and well beyond. Lou Ketrick, Spectrum Sports. Hey, Jeff. Over the past couple of years, you've acquired or drafted guys that have a significant injury history. Given what happened this year and even the year before with the injuries, how does that impact how you scout a potential prospect or even evaluate guys that you already have on the roster? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, I'll say that some of the guys that we brought in didn't have an injury history. They just developed one, unfortunately, and some did. And some, some, some um, you know, did. And, and you kind of like, obviously, I always say on draft day and on trade deadline day, the doctors are the GMs. You know, if they tell us to stay away from somebody, we stay away. And um, um, that's how we'll continue to work. Um, I think it's of paramount importance that we have a, an elite performance department. And, and I believe that we do. And I know that our players believe that we do. And so, but those are always considerations, you know, every year, you know, from as long as I've been in the league, the docs will come in, you know, a week before the draft and you'll go through every single guy and, and give them kind of a, a list of guys that you're particularly interested in. So that when they go to Chicago, they get to, you know, probe a little more deeply and they give you the rundown. Like here's, here's where he is. Here's what we see. Here are the issues that he may have. And, you know, we're comfortable with this. We're, we're a little uneasy about this or red flag this. Um, so that's just part of like the draft process. I don't think we're any different than other teams. We just happen to have had this crazy string of bad luck. I mean, honestly, I, I never like to use those words. And I know you guys know me. I, I try not to ever fall on an excuse, but you know, it's funny. One of the things that, 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 uh, was put in front of me was I was shown all the um, um, uh, games missed due to injury for the last five years. You know, this is something that our analytics guys produced. And um, so imagine the top three for the last five years. So you got like 15 slots. Okay. So I won't say the team, but there was one team uh, five years ago and four years ago that was third place. They were, they were, they were third place in the league games missed to injury five years ago, four years ago. Other than that, all of the other 15 slots, not one duplication of team. It's, it's, it's 13 different teams. And that's just the way this goes. You know, it's not like because this happened this year, it's going to happen next year. Um, it's just, you know, we got, we got steamrolled this year, you know? And um, so, so obviously that's something that, you know, as I always say, we're going to take our time with, we're not going to rush guys back. We're going to, do everything we can to, um, you know, get ourselves back to full strength. But, you know, it, it has to be a part of any discussion that you make with, with trades and drafting and you have to weigh the risk reward. And, and um, you know, uh, I just look forward to having a, a, a healthy, talented group back on the floor soon.